Okay, we should be set. Welcome everybody. Uh, today is September 17th, 2020. It is noon and the purpose of our meeting here today for this special city council meeting is for this council to review um, and discuss the Arches Hotspot Coordinating Committee's draft of the off Main Street parking concept. Um, we're gonna start with a quick presentation from our city engineer, Chuck Williams. Then we're gonna have a quick presentation from our communications and engagement manager, Lisa Church. And um, then we will um, follow, follow all of that with discussion among the council um, and um, feedback from the um, committee members to this council about how things are going. Um, real quick, before we get started, Summer, can you please uh, take us through a roll call? Yep, we have Mayor Emily Niehaus, Mike Duncan, Moab City Council, Carly Castle, Assistant City Manager, Chuck Williams, City Engineer, Joel Linares, City Manager, Galen Jones, Moab City Council, Jaron Guzman-Newton, Moab City Council, Terry Kirk, Deputy Recorder, Lori Simonson, City Attorney, Lisa Church, Communications and Engagement Man Manager, and Ronnie Duressery, Moab City Council. Wonderful, thank you so much, Summer. Uh, Chuck, we're gonna start with you. Um, and I just wanna impress on all of us that we um, did have um, the information in our packets and have hopefully all of us have reviewed as well as you are presenting to three existing members of the committee. So, um, you know, um, hitting key points um, would be helpful with the presentations. And Mike, I saw your hand. Did you have something you wanted to Yeah, yeah I just wanted to give you a quick overview, very quick. Uh, we're looking at off street parking that Chuck is going to outline uh, because that was uh, our best way of satisfying hotspot funding criteria among a, a much broader list of projects that we have been sorting out. So here today, that's what we're gonna talk about today, but I wanted to credit um, Matt Hancock, who's been attending many of the hotspot meetings and so forth is the original instigator of uh, the so-called Lancaster, California median parking concept and, and Chuck has picked up on that and done his own version in, in quite a bit of detail but I, I just want for the audience who is not familiar with what the hotspot committee is doing including you other council members that's why we're talking about this particular concept here today uh, there's still the possibility that we could do some transit funding and so forth because it looks like the parking that Chuck has outlined here may come in less money than what UDOT has to spend but that's another subject Okay, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of that over you and I will stop. Thank you so much for um, say, sharing that, Mike. And um, I just wanted to thank you and, and Kaylin and Karen for um, serving on this committee, as well as reaching out to me about having this special meeting to report back to council. Um, we would have normally done this at a regular city council meeting, but because our next meeting is the public hearing for the Prop 8, we're doing it here now. So thanks to everybody also for, um, Coming back together, I see that Karen somehow got kicked off. So hopefully, Karen, you're able to log back in, and um, Carrie and Summer just be looking for her in the waiting room. Looks like we got her back. Okay, Chuck, take it away. You're on mute. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'll share. My, I want to share my screen quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me. Uh, this, like uh, Mike said, this was predicated somewhat on the Lancaster model of Lancaster, California, which has median parking in place. And um, one, we, I was going to show you a picture of that if I could, but I won't bother you with that. You can find it on Google Earth. Uh, can you see this now, my screen? Okay, this is the work that we've done in the last several months. Um, I, the council has seen it in your packet, but briefly, um, we've segmented out sections of the street off of Main Street, primarily. This is Main Street or Highway 191. This is 200 North. Um, the members of the committee haven't seen this yet because I was asked to add this in since last Wednesday, and we have completed it since then. Um, so this is 200 West, 200 North. This is 100 north between 100 west to Main Street, 100 north over to 100 east 
And this is also new to the committee. We were asked to add this in last week, and that's also included in the parking count that I'll share with you, as well as the cost, if we want to talk about that today. Um, this is Center Street from 100 West over past Main Street over to 100 East. And you see we've also uh, re restriped uh, 100 East between 100 North and 100 South. Um, and this is 100 South with uh, the change being to the east of Main Street. Uh, we chose not to make any changes here because this is all new construction and it would be very difficult to uh, see much benefit out of that. Um, so that being said, I'll uh, just look at maybe at one example that we don't have to look at all of them, uh, but in the interest of time, uh, you can see that this is a blow up of looks like this is Main Street to 100 Center Street. Oh, 100 South. Yeah. Uh, and you can see there that the green lines are the sewer, the sanitary sewer. The blue lines are uh, our culinary water system. Um, the existing street lights are in yellow, but the blue circle around them. Um, this is the median parking concept where there'd be one way traffic. These, these spaces would go away and the eastbound traffic would pull in and park here. Westbound traffic would be moving westbound and would come in and pull here. And that's where you park. Then when you get out of your car, you walk over to the curb and over to the curb. Uh, there's no sidewalks along in here to come to the crosswalk. Um, it's, and th therefore, um, we have added street lighting. And members of the committee haven't seen this. We discussed it last week. Um, I went back. Lancaster has street lighting um, in their um, medians as well as on the curb. Because we've got to recognize we try and consider all the conditions that are relevant to putting parking in the street. And it's not just daytime conditions, it's nighttime conditions. It's not just sunny days, it's snowy days. Um, the material type, this is uh, stamped dyed concrete. Um, Lancaster used pavers. Lancaster has one inch of snow per year. Moab average is nine inches of snow per year. Their low month is 31 degrees. Our low temperature month is uh, 20 degrees in January. So freeze thaw is a major consideration in material types. So there's we pavers would not be practical. They're not that much cheaper, actually, amazingly, than the stamp dyed concrete. Um, this is a textured out here to prevent people from doing U-turns. The black lines you see here are bollards, about 42 inches tall, to help delineate the parking spaces uh, for people. And then these yellow are lights. Uh, 12 foot pedestrian, uh, pedestrian uh, street lights. And we had the conversation that all those, any lights uh, would be dark sky compliant. You know, it's not, the intent isn't to light it up like a massive parking lot. The intent is to give it a, people enough light to safely negotiate both getting out of their car and getting to the curb and then back from the curb over to um, the, the, their car. Um, this is parallel parking where we could fit it in. We put parallel parking on one side of the street, typically. Uh, I want to come down here. Now, I'm happy to look at any of these streets in as much detail as you'd like. I think one thing I would point out when I get to I think the next one is Center Street, not 100 East. Um, all of these are contingent upon uh, no left turns coming out of the driveways. That's another reason for the bollards. Um, because people would get trained that this is our, these are right in and right out. These have essentially become one way streets where the median parking is. And you don't want people to be trained to thinking this is median parking, in fact, or with one way streets. In fact, we'd sign it as one way streets. And then someone comes up here because there's no one parked here and sneaks out and crosses and either goes the wrong way or 
screams out in the traffic where we have pedestrians, bicyclists who think it's a one-way street and they're not expecting anyone to pull out. So that's the other safety element of having those bollards there as well as delineating. Uh, these are uh, spaces with a two foot wide, and I'll show you the detail here real quick. Um, so here's a, a view of the parking stalls. So a car would pull in here and stop the nose of the vehicle. Bollards, this is uh, nine feet wide. And then these are two foot wide also, just a different texture of the stamped concrete. And this is a street light assembly um, at this point. You know, and in final design, you would do a, a if this were to move forward, you know, we would, someone, uh, we would have someone do a lighting study. You know, we had our consultant do a, a, a lighting study for us on the 191 widening project, if you'll recall. And uh, that would be the correct way in terms of determining number and spaces of lighting. We took a estimate based on the, that report that we had and based upon our experience. But again, that would be a, to be determined in final design. Uh, here is, and you don't have this exactly in your packet because this was based on the new work that we were asked to do last week and we were able to get it done for today's meeting. Uh, and you can see here that, there you go. I hope we can see that. This is a parking count. Uh, these are the streets. But because of the joy of working with all these numbered streets, we just gave them an identifier, street one through nine, if that's easier for you to look at them, as opposed to saying the second block of East 100 North. <clears throat> anyway, uh, this is the existing parking space count. This is if we converted everything to median. This is be if we converted everything in that street to 60 degree parking. And then the recommended arrangement after looking at those and the conflicts that occur and trying to maximize the number of parking spaces. We end up with uh, three of the streets basically being treated with 60 degree angle parking. Currently we have 45 degree angle parking. By sharpening that angle up, we can get a few more spaces in for a given distance. It's still angle parking. Um, and so, Bottom line is right down here um, under this configuration. Chuck, this is, they're very small to see. Maybe it's just my screen, but. Oh, I'm sorry. I can very, very uh, is that better? Yeah. Now, can you see it, Mayor? Yeah. So end result is under the configuration that we've submitted, there's an increase of 144 parking spaces under this scenario. And you can see this is by, uh, now that's if we don't consider the 100 South project that, you know, is 100% engineering is done. If we build the 100 South as designed, there'd be an increase of 135 spaces. So what that means is if we don't do the 100 South as designed now, we'd have to do a redesign of that. We could pick up nine more spaces on 100 South. Um, and if we added the Emma, what would that be? That, what would that include, in, increase in terms of parking spaces? Um, Emma Boulevard, it, um, the piece of right of way that's next to the church that would become the parking lot Memory serves me that we were at 21 spaces there, but the additional long Emma, uh, I don't have that number in front of me. I'm sorry. I think we picked up like seven or eight down there. I think so. Thanks. Yeah, I can certainly get that, but uh, I'll get back to you while Lisa's talking. Um, the one thing I did, I'm almost done with this. And, um, we also submitted to you design assumptions because we wanted you to know uh, what we did and why we did it. And we thought this was a good um, explanation for some of those. Those are 12 foot travel lanes between the median parking and the um, curbside. Um, and one of the things that I'd point out to you that's different than um, 
Lancaster is we did not put any trees in the median. And I would not recommend trees permanently being in the median. Those streets are all filled with utilities. And um, potted trees, I think, could be fine. And trees curbside could be fine. But I think that there are real issues with um, trying to keep those uh, median parking on the years when we do get snow. And as we all know, some years we get snow and some years we don't get snow. But snow plowing and uh, street cleaning is a consideration um, in, in our, we consider it in our design. And with that quick overview, I'd be happy to answer any questions now or later, Mayor, as you wish, and Council. That's great, um, Chuck, thank you for that. Let's um, pivot over to, to um, Lisa to present to us the findings of the survey. And then I'm also, um, I received a, a note from Councilmember uh, Jones that there is a, um, a quick presentation from him and Karen as well. So um, Lisa, you're up next. Hi everybody, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, and the charts will look slightly different than what the committee saw just because I tried to um, add a little more information to them um, based on some questions I had during our presentation. So here we go. Can you all see that? Okay, great. So we did a survey uh, to try to get some input from the community about what their preferences might be within the project parameters that are currently being considered by the council or by the committee, I should say. Um, we received 213 responses. The survey was out for about two weeks. So um, we thought that was pretty good. And 207 of those were actually Moab and Grand County residents. We had six people who were uh, not local residents who also took the survey. Um, so one of the questions we asked at the beginning was, um, we, we listed the project goals that had been identified by the committee. And this information came from Matt Hancock. And so we kind of worked it into a question. And um, we asked among those project goals for the respondents to rank them in order of importance from their perspective. And as you'll see, the top ranks um, item, and these are people who ranked it either first or second, was um, encouraging and supporting greater pedestrian, bicycle, and transit activity. Um, number two in this was creating attractive and appealing streetscapes where people want to gather um, and with aesthetics that reflect Moab's unique character. Number three was improving traffic throw, flow through and around most of Grand County, most of downtown Moab, I mean. Uh, number four ranked uh, in, in fourth place, sorry, was providing additional on-street parking. And uh, finally, um, providing flexible design features that allow um, parking spaces and rights of way to be easily converted to public spaces. Uh, and finally, the last item was more effectively linking businesses, recreational and cultural centers on and off of Main Street. And so then we asked a similar question, which was um, asking the residents to provide their own priorities. And those responses came out as um, the top one being uh, pedestrian friendly, uh, relieving traffic congestion was number two, improving traffic flow was number three, bicycle friendly was number four, um, aesthetics, um, and basically attractive parking areas was number five, retaining neighborhood character was number six, and increasing the number of parking stalls came in um, in last place in that particular question. Uh, next, we asked um, for their take on the combinations of parking styles that were being considered by the committee. And there were photographs, and Ronnie asked me to send out um, a PDF of the original survey, which included those pictures, so you all should have that. Um, so angled parking um, 
was ranked as favorite by um, most of the respondents. Uh, the weighted average was 3.1, and you can see that 60% of respondents ranked that as their number one favorite. Median parking was kind of a mixed response, but it came in second um, when it was ranked, uh, when all four of the options were ranked. Uh, perpendicular parking came in number three. Parallel parking came in number four. We all love parallel parking. <laughs> we all hate parallel parking, apparently. Um, I don't think that was any big surprise, but you know, it was good to see what people like and don't like. Um, we also asked them what they believe should be the focus of creating parking on side streets from 100 north to 100 south. And we did provide a map at the very beginning that showed what those areas were that we were considering then. They didn't include these extended blocks that Chunter showed you. Um, and in that particular one, um, people um, were interested in, hang on a second. Developing parking areas with aesthetic amenities came in first. Maintaining neighborhood character came in second. Creating dedicated bicycle lanes came in third. Um, bicycle lanes themselves came in fourth. And we had asked people in this question to rank from one to four, and some people ranked all the way out to number eight. So I've just included all of these in here. Uh, creating as many parking stalls as possible came in fifth. Uh, bicycle parking, which is different than bicycle lanes, came in sixth. Developing parking lots came in seventh. And leave parking as it is on side streets came in last. That was a real question. Um, we also um, explained to the respondents that all of the Main Street parking concepts under consideration include some form of median parking. And so we asked if they liked, disliked, had no strong opinion or uh, about median parking in the center medians of the street. And 26.13% um, uh, of the folks said they strongly like it. And uh, a very close number, 24.62, said they like it. Uh, we did have um, 53 people out of the group who said they dislike or strongly dislike it. And 45 of the respondents basically said they don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. Um, a few takeaways from the survey. Um, I think it's safe to say that respondents are generally amenable to all four types of parking but ranked angle parking and median parking the highest. Uh, parallel parking is clearly the least preferred. <clears throat> Improving pedestrian, pedestrian safety and walk-friendly aesthetic characteristics ranked high for residents, as did relieving traffic congestion and improving traffic flow. Um, and while median parking received um, largely positive rankings in a separate question, uh, views of how median parking affects pedestrian safety were certainly mixed. Um, several people said they raised concerns in their open-ended comments about median parking that it may be more dangerous for pedestrians, while others expressed the opposite view that it would improve safety. Um, and finally, most respondents did not see increasing the number of parking stalls as a top priority in either questions where they were asked to rank that. Um, it came in fourth. Um, came in last in question four and fifth out of seven and um, or fifth out of eight in question five. And finally, some of the general comments that people made because we did have a couple of options for we had an option for open ended comments. Several people urged the committee to quote consider the locals when deciding on final potential projects. Several people said the committee should consider putting in paid parking or time limits in certain areas. Some comments suggested that additional parking is not needed in Moab's downtown core. Several comments focused on the need to create parking for oversized vehicles. Almost an even number of 11, 4, and 10 against spoke specifically about the previous, previously considered parking structure. Um, 
Many respondents expressed that median parking could slow traffic. However, several also suggested it could compromise pedestrian and bicycle safety. And improving aesthetics, planting more trees, and possibly including green infrastructure in the downtown core received multiple, multiple mentions. That was 15 total. And so what's next? Um, we have tentatively, tentatively scheduled a virtual open house for September 29th by Zoom meeting um, and a presentation on these concepts will be made to the public with a Q&A with the committee to follow. There's a public open house also tentatively scheduled, and this would be an in-person open house for October 6th at the Sun Court. And that would include presentation boards and chances for the public to ask questions and comment. We are discussing doing at least one more community survey once additional projects or the full range of potential projects are identified. And we're continuing to do uh, social media, advertising, and direct outreach updates. Um, and the website itself, which has a, its own separate tab for the hotspot, will be updated as the committee identifies additional projects and recommendations. And the survey results will also be posted up there. So um, any questions? And I'm going to go ahead and unshare my screen. If Thank you. Um, there are likely questions, <coughs> but I want to pivot over to Kaylin and Karen to share their uh, presentation with us all. Um, uh, if that is agreeable, Kaylin, is, that, is this the right time to do that? Yes, it is. OK. And then we can go into discussion. Yes. OK. Share away. So thank you, Chuck and Lisa. For, for what it's worth, you're very quiet. Oh. So I don't know if you can. Um... Enunciate, speak up. <laughs> Maybe. Go um, ahead. If I speak more loudly, does that, am I more clear? OK. Great. Thanks, Chuck and Lisa, for those updated presentations. It was good to see the reformatting and additional information. So we, um, we wanted to fill the committee in because um, we are closing in on our deadline to submit the proposal package to UDOT, and, um, which is at the beginning of November. And towards the end of October, we anticipate bringing to you the um, full package, and but we realize that this is a significant change to what our downtown street, streetscapes are gonna be like. And so before we get it, got too far, we wanted to get um, everyone sort of up to speed and have the opportunity to ask questions and provide input. Um, and after pivoting to the parking garage, um, we've been working with UDOT and it's not totally clear what the scoring criteria for reawarding the money is, but it seems like some of them that have been discussed are having a somewhat comparable total number of additional stalls as would have been created with the parking garage. Um, a, the parking stall cost per stall um, being equivalent or less than what we would have been spending on a parking structure. And then the downtown parking structure had in its budget a percentage for aesthetic features as well as um, um, sustainability. And uh, there's been allusion to possibly using that same formula, but it's a little hard to parse at this point because some of the aesthetic features in the streetscape could also be considered economic development. Um, so even though we've discussed multiple proposals, we have focused heavily on the side streets, which is why we're talking about them today. And um, in addition to providing parking, um, what the model that's been presented and which um, it seems like we have embraced is one of complete streets where they support multimodal transportation um, to accommodate all road users. Um, as well as supporting economic development goals. And 
Um, there is support for this both in UDOT's active transportation policy as well as um, scattered throughout the city of Moab's general plan. Um, this is a few, few excerpts from that. Um, and addressing the need for central city parking is also included in our general plan. So we're trying to hit multiple points through this process. So this is Cortez and um, we don't wanna just create parking downtown. Parking is the primary goal, but here's an example of um, median diagonal parking without other amenities. And um, West 100 North, um, it has parking. It, it has plenty of pavement for new parking, but again, um, it's not a streetscape that really draws people. Here's West Center Street as a contrast. Um, and I've noticed this in front of um, City Hall as well. People gravitate towards parking their vehicles in shade. And then this also has other attractive features that can potentially be incorporated in the final design. And again, further down West Center, um, a number of elements that uh, really activate the street and um, move, move our downtown in the direction we're hoping to go. Um, and so as you've just heard from Lisa, um, in addition to parking, we're also trying to, people are really want more pedestrian bicycle um, activity as well as transit, which is a, has come up in the hotspot committee, but wasn't directly addressed in the survey. Um, and then creating more attractive streetscapes um, to really activate downtown and get people to linger there and shop and walk between stores rather than driving between them. And this is all encapsulated in the complete streets movement, um, which is, it's a national movement that um, recognizes the value of designing roads to support all road users. And um, many hundreds of agencies at all levels of government have embraced it. Um, it's some of the principles are referenced in our general plan, but the city hasn't adopted sort of a clear policy statement in that regard. So on the right of this slide, you can see Lancaster, California's um, redeveloped streetscape, which um, has been the primary model. The hotspot committee looked at a number of different communities. And this seemed the most applicable, both because of having a similar um, right of way to work with. Um, and also they, their design is pretty simple. It's almost all at the same grade. So it's flexible to adapt to changing um, mobility preferences as well as um, reducing costs. And here's a blow up of that. Um, so, Kay, a quick question for you, Lisa, if I, sorry to interrupt. Is this the picture, Lisa, that uh, may have been included with the survey? In other words, when respondents uh, were asked to comment on whether they liked uh, median, median parking or not, they see this this picture, the one with the gorgeous trees out there, or do they see one that looked more like Cortez? Uh, this is one of the photos that was included. And, you know, we did ask the subcommittee members to send us um, images. And so Matt Hancock sent us two different images from Lancaster, and but they both showed, you know, the trees and lights and that sort of thing. Okay. Lisa, Thank this you. is Ronnie, just because I've been looking at the survey, I did see a picture from Lancaster with trees, but I didn't see this particular one in case it makes a difference, but maybe I missed it. Um, I may have chosen the other one, which I believe is the first one that, um, you may have seen from, from Caitlin there. I can't remember. I had two and I, I picked one that seemed to fit best in the survey form itself. So, Yeah, and, and the survey at this point, we didn't want to overemphasize particular images. Um, it, it was more, <clears throat> we wanted to get more programmatic input and we needed to use images to a limited extent to illustrate the differences, but we, we weren't at a stage where we wanted to say, this is what it's going to be, and do you want A, B, or C? Because um, we wanted it to be an iterative process and make sure that we were on the right track. Um, 
And that's why we're having multiple rounds of public input. Um, so this slide is just illustrating um, what happens when you have um, uh, the long parking stalls abutting each other in that if you happen to have an oversized vehicle, um, it can ex if it can extend past the dividing line, then many um, smaller vehicles can still use the facing stall. Um, I think Chuck made some good points about the safety features of preventing cross traffic. And perhaps there's a way further in design to achieve both goals. And these are just some uh, numbers from the Lancaster project. Um, and this is provided by uh, Matt Hancock by His Research. And I'm hoping that city staff can continue to refine this. I think the safety considerations are really important. Um, but lowering the speed limit both decreases the incidence and severity of collisions, both pedestrian and motor vehicles. But we need to, we need to, this is a big change, so we need to vet it thoroughly. And all sorts of complete streets and other um, street design documents. Um, so, you know, that is, that is the bulk of what I had to present. And I'd like to, we, it looks like we have about 20 minutes left. So maybe we should get into discussion and questions. Love it. Okay, so go ahead and unshare your screen. Thank you. That was uh, an amazing set of presentations. Um, so um, uh, we definitely want to have the discussion and have it be most efficient. So um, I wanted to start with a question for the committee members that asked for this special meeting and agenda item. Um, what would you like to get out of the remainder of this discussion? What input do you need? What do you need from the council to be um, most effective in your committee? So may I, Mayor? Um, so I mean, like Kaylin mentioned, that, you know, this is an opportunity for us to kind of get get everyone um, on track on what we've been working on. There was a little bit of disconnect, like so there um what the community is asking for so we need to be really clear this isn't our money this is UDOT, you know paying for this project and their goal is to relieve congestion off of main street so i mean, I mean as much as we you know want to let the community have at you know like the most perfect design we really have to keep in the consideration that they're not competing interests but but there, there are definitely two different mandates that are um, happening. Like what we would like to see as a community and then what UDOT is going to need to see in order to fund this, this grant funding. So this committee is trying to look at how we can marry those two, those two ideas and um, you know, relieve the congestion off of Maine, you know, bring it into, um, you know, our side streets, increase the economic development, create green spaces. I know we as a committee really were um, proponents of, of moving forward with um, really refocusing on and not just vehicles, but pedestrians, bicycles and, and transit. So kind of coming to an agreement that that we can offer something pretty fabulous for the for for the city. Um, and that, you know, still, still fulfill what we need to do for, um, for you dot. So it's, you know, again, just like trying to come to, uh, a marriage that is going to be comfortable for, for everyone. So we, we each have to give and take a little bit, but, um, and so, you know, not having trees, you know, that was an assumption, um, that we can't do that. So, but that is, that is a goal for for the committee to still get green space and it, and it definitely with the survey results it's a it's a um a, a very high priority for for the community and so again you know the we, we'd like to get the buy-in early that that's the direction we want to go 
And I think what Kaylin and I have found out through this process is that, I mean, we as a legislative body, we really need to make some policy, um, like real steps towards co code changes and, and policy implementation. And so this is kind of a, a, a good time for us to, you know, to work on both of these at the same time. Okay, so um, what I'm hearing is um, that um, you're working on buy-in, early buy-in as before we go into the community process and that we, the, the, we're running into design um, tension because we don't have um, design codified yet downtown. Um, yes. So um, let me ask you this because um, Kaylin, the pres you, you know, your few slides were um, great to see and, um, uh, you know, complemented nicely sort of the, the layout of the parking spots that Chuck was showing, but um, will you not pay for the cost of this complete street um, vision since we're saving so much on, on pivoting to parking on streets as opposed to building the structure. Is there a financial implication as to why there is this tension of whether or not to do lights and bulb outs and um, trees, whether they be in the street or in planters? Not that I've heard, oh. Maybe Chuck and maybe Chuck has more current information, but not that I've heard. It seems like it's, as far as I can tell, maybe it's a negotiation. Yeah, my own take on it, uh, Mary, is uh, yeah, it is a factor. Uh, Monte Aldridge, a number of times over the course of several meetings, has keeps iterating that uh, they will consider it as a figure of merit, the cost per stall, and. Um, what percentage of cost is devoted towards amenities like landscaping and so forth, which everybody says they like, um, which kind of runs at odds with what Chuck is uh, proposing. We'll talk more about that later on, but that's uh, that's part of it. Uh, so yeah, there is that figure of merit. That's what I meant to say. Um, if, if I may, it seems like a, a, a central part of what we've been trying to do is just establish a viable stall count and um, budget for to propose to UDOT. And I mean, even within Chuck's work and his staff, um, there, there's still flexibility. And as I've understood it, there would be, if the money's awarded, as with the parking structure, um, there would be a second, much more detailed round of design potentially. The parking structure was not designed when the money was awarded, it was, it was feasible, on, uh, but it still needed a lot of refinement to, to get to um, um, yeah. figure out the, the right of the basically the property ownership along the edges as well as other things. So, um, so I think more just we want to hear from the council. I guess it's mainly Ronnie at this point. Um, questions and issues to. The, are high priorities to raise with the committee. And then also um, establish if there's things that like we definitely want on the table coming um, post, post award if that happens. So Ronnie, do you wanna go ahead and respond to Kaylin then? Mute. You're muted. Sorry. Ronnie. Yeah, um, uh, I don't know if Mike wants to say something first, but yeah, I'm gonna need a few minutes because I got uh, several things. Very quick question for Chuck. Uh, this subject of cost keeps coming up and up. Chuck, my explicit question for you is, based on the design work you've done so far, uh, you know, the drawings that you've showed us and so forth, does it even make any sense to talk about going up for what I might call a request for information from possible uh, vendors or designers who could give us some sort of ballpark number on what it would cost to build what you're talking about, even though the gory, you know, to ask for RFQ or request for proposal, which would be a hard number that they would be legally bound to might be beyond our reach right now and that we haven't done enough design detailed work. But just with what you have right now, would, would you go out for an RFI and, and would anybody actually respond with a cost that would be useful to us? Um, I think the direct answer is yes. I mean, we've, that's a concept design we did 
you know, that's not construction level plans. Um, and to answer quickly, one of the agreements that I've heard from UDOT within the last two weeks is that they would consider a 6% of total project cost to be dedicated to aesthetics. So Hold up. That How, what was the percentage of aesthetics for the parking structure? Because I guarantee it was more than 6%. No, it was 6% because it was a lot. It was, it was 6%. It was 600,000 out of 10 million, which is 6%. And that's, that's their logic is that what we said that, I mean, if you can prove the numbers different, they would agree with you that the policy statement that they told me was, and you may be more effective at getting <laughs> more out of it, was that they thought it was fair that the amount dedicated for aesthetics on the parking structure could also be dedicated for here um, as well. So that's Karen, what I was told. Karen, why don't you go and then we'll have Ronnie speak. Okay, I was just gonna say quickly that, you know, um, aesthetics, so lighting is expensive. But that's not an aesthetic, that's a safety um, element. And so, I mean, that doesn't mean that that would be included in that 600, you know. And so these, there's elements in the, the design that potentially isn't aesthetics. I mean, people typically think aesthetic as, as art. So, um, or, you know, the, the decoration. And that's not, I mean, there's other elements in being able to have a complete street designs that is outside of aesthetics. So I just would like to say that. But also, I mean, just quickly, um, Ronnie, you know, there's, and, and Lisa, you know, with our survey, there was a lot of um, questions about safety. And so um, like La Jolla in um, San Diego, Cincinnati, um, Hamburg, New York, between Buffalo and, and Center, Raleigh, North Carolina, South Miami, they've implemented these complete street um, uh, road diets, so, so to speak, and there's anywhere from 90% to 40% um, reduction in traffic incidences. So, I mean, that it, they, there's so much data that supports that it's actually much safer when you can slow traffic down and you aren't, you know, you don't have just a wide 70 foot sidescape that we, that we currently have. So I just want to put that up. Yeah. And Karen, I think that would be a really important thing for the committee when you do your presentation at the public meetings to talk to the public about so they understand that. Okay. Ronnie, go ahead. Sorry, with the mute. Um, I have a list here, I don't expect answers now, but I just got some recommendations from reading that packet carefully on a stuff, kind of like uh, Karen and Lisa are saying that I would just um, think residents would want in terms of information um, for the next stages of this and a few things that I could use. Um, so um, in that information, if you could address this basic question some people have had about, is the parking really needed, especially because of the downtown study? I think some people need some um, just a, uh, a paragraph on that explaining um, the justification. Um, we did have several people ask if our streets were wide enough. Um, so just uh, uh, you know, responding to that question. Um, the safety question, the stuff you mentioned now is great, Karen, if that could go in there, that would be great. Um, complete streets, I'm familiar with them from other communities. I'm totally on board with that. I'm happy to help the council. Uh, if we need to do any code stuff sooner, I'm sure it's, it's kind of thing planning commission would be excited to work on. Um, so just let us know what you need in terms of support for that. Um, I would hope that if we moved into the complete streets um, uh, planning that um, at some point that would be something that would involve a landscape architecture, someone with background in um, green infrastructure, given our um, sustainability goals and um, just the, um, the skill set. Um, required for that. Um, in terms of cost, I'd like to see, and I'm sure the public would, um, some information um, here uh, when available on the cost for space, especially given what we were looking at for the parking structure. Um, I do have some questions about things like this um, concrete being proposed given um, its greenhouse gas impacts. Um, uh, just uh, that might be a design thing that gets decided later, but I do feel like um, I would need a little explanation about why you don't just go um, with asphalt or something that some of the people asking for green infrastructure are asking for. 
um, uh, vegetation. I mean, reading comments from people, I couldn't see approving something like the picture Kaylin showed without anything. Um, so I think there, this definitely needs to be there. And I would worry a little bit, I'd need some reassurance because when we were talking about the parking structure in the beginning, we kept being told there would be elements of sustainability. And then as the discussions went on, it was like, oh, well, actually it's gonna be more expensive. There may not be any money left for that. And I don't wanna go down a path where that's gonna happen. Um, it would help me to have more information on the timeline moving forward. So thanks, Kaylin, for explaining. We're looking at November. And thanks, um, Lisa, for explaining those potential open meetings. I kind of would like to see um, a draw up on what this looks like from start to finish. That's the only way I know how to do project um, planning and the only way I will understand how we fit the meetings in and we fit the eventual vote on this in uh, all within um, what UDOT has asked us to do. Um, I would suggest and personally request a better map for the public um, because it was very hard for me to look and see what parking spaces were new versus which ones are existing versus which ones are maybe existing and gonna shift. Um, so I don't know how you want to do that, maybe with different colors to um, show those different things, but it was very hard, for example, um, to tell uh, when uh, angled parking was going to shift over a little bit versus when it was going to come out and be replaced by parallel parking versus when there would be no parking up against the curb. So that just helps businesses and residents um, because I think too now we're dealing with some streets that were not originally in the survey and I understand that that changes, but um, I think we all know about parking um, when you go to the public, um, they really want to understand uh, where the changes are going to be and how. Um, the, in terms of the questions about speed limits and enforcement, um, you know, so many of the safety concerns seem to be that this design works best um, with lower speed limits. So um, I would want some kind of commitment um, to knowing that that was going to be lower and knowing that we have some consistency. So I'm guessing I've seen things, uh, I think, in some of the documentation raised between 15 and 20 miles per hour. So it would just be helpful um, to have that. And then um, I, I think in a previous discussion, you guys mentioned this either on the side of this hotspot work or as part of it, we could get some better signage um, to the city lot. I passed it again and I thought, oh, yeah. Um, Okay, I'm, it's good to know I can't enter here, but it really doesn't tell me where to go if I want to enter. Um, so just some really basic things, you know, I think a lot of people have been asking for um, just to make that more usable. And sorry if that doesn't totally relate here, but um, uh, the bollards, uh, uh, I guess you guys as a committee can, um, you know, tell me the sense of those. I understand how they help in some ways. And yes, you don't want people pulling across. Um, I'm a little bit confused. Like if you want a longer vehicle to be able to pull in and leave a little room for a shorter one, I assume that bollards are equidistant. So I'm not exactly sure how that works because some people had asked if I have something longer than an F-150, can I still park there and stick out? And we all know from driving around town, um, sometimes it can be, um, uh, really kind of creepy uh, to try and get along around longer vehicles, either as a pedestrian or a cyclist or a driver. Um, sometimes if you're parked next to one, you basically have to pull out so far, you're basically in the street or over the yellow line before you can see traffic. Um, so um, just maybe a little bit more um, as we move through this understanding of uh, the pros and cons of those and where they're placed. Um, and uh, let me just see what else, if anything, I had here. Um, I think in our original survey, it said, you know, it, the results were to help inform the committee on their recommendations. And I, I didn't know as this moves forward, do we get like an official recommendation from the hotspot committee? Um, I didn't know like today's meeting, if it was all materials prepared by the committee um, or, or not. So um, that's just helpful for me as a council member. Um, and, uh, and while I understand some of the differences between resident priorities is the last thing and uh, maybe UDOT priorities at the same time as my understanding that the hotspot money wasn't just to relieve um, congestion, but it was also just to help um, support businesses. And I'm forgetting the third component, um, but I just, uh, um, I, I know the survey said the purpose was to create appealing and functional streetscapes and strengthen community life and extend business opportunities and mitigate congestion. So maybe in that informational packet for the public, it would help if someone could address in a few sentences how this particular design um, is gonna do that. Like if you just look at the drawing and no vegetation, you kind of think, eh. Um, 
what's it doing for me? Is this just for the tourists so they have more parking? So I think maybe a little bit more, if we can get the vegetation in there and we can have a little bit of explanation for people, like it wasn't clear to me if a bike got a bike lane or if they're just supposed to ride in the main lane of traffic. So some clarity on that would be good too. Um, and that's just my uh, laundry list of, like I said, I don't need questions now, but I think addressing some of those would help um, other people respond. Um, uh, and then you guys can just let me know what's most helpful for my end. I'm happy to help you. And thank you again for all the work and Matt Hancock, uh, hands down. Thank you. Yeah, done. Thanks, Ronnie. That was a, a really comprehensive list and definitely things for the committee and, and Chuck to um, absorb and, and follow up with. Um, and I just wanted to share a few things too. I'm very grateful to the committee um, it feels like you are achieving the task, which is um, the question of, can we put this parking dispersed as opposed to in one location downtown? And the follow-up with, and let's make it look really great, um, is very encouraging. Um, so I'm glad that we are um, seated and you know, hearing that that's where the committee is seated in terms of the, the project and still looking at transit too. Um, I think this is all really encouraging. Um, I just had three quick uh, comments that, that I wanted to share. Number one, I think it's really important to include Emma. I'd really like us to um, include Emma in this dispersed parking. It uh, affords parking to businesses on the north end. We had a very large stakeholder meeting back in March where everyone agreed at the conclusion of the meeting to move forward with um, that proposal. So I just would like to see that included in the um, presentation to UDOT. It affords us with more parking spots and those parking spots are part of a dispersed plan. Um, so that's my request to, the, the, to, to you all on the committee to include that um, and to you Chuck as well. Um, and Ronnie, I very much echo the improving the city lot uh, we talk, we've talked about that a lot and um, that will maybe not give us more, more spots, but it will definitely um, make uh, those parking spots more accessible in terms of flow, um, especially if we get the in and out on 100 West, as opposed to the awkward one way in and one way out. Um, I'm even wondering if that could turn out to be, if it, that could be repurposed as, um, a potential RV lot or a lot for trucks and trailers because that is um, one of my, um, you know, I'm seeing the survey and I'm thinking about too with all this dispersed parking, where are the, where are the RVs to go? Um, when I see the median parking, I think, well, if the, um, the um, bollards weren't there, then an RV could pull in, take up two parking spots and then reverse and move on. I mean, I have backed up a truck and a trailer and I feel like I could make that move, but um, I know that there's some engineering that needs to go into that as to whether or not that's a, a viable um, parking situation for those long um, vehicles, but that's a real parking issue. Um, so those are the three things. And then finally, Ronnie, you had said something about our eventual vote as a council, but I, from what I understand, what the hotspot committee has from us is the blessing to move forward. I'm not sure that we as a council actually will have any kind of vote or decision on the plan, but I would like to know if I'm right or wrong on that. So maybe the committee, are you thinking that we are going to vote on what or, or are you looking for support from us? Like, what is the role of the council as a whole in moving forward with the proposed plan as it goes to UDOT? Yeah, and I'll just add the reason I said that is because when we originally talked about timeline and when we had to finish this, whatever what it was, August or something, and that was written in there, I think, into a timeline. So that's. So what, what do you need from council? What's, um, what, what, where, where are we? Karen, can you answer that? Yeah, um, and I'll, Carly, if you want to correct me, but um, we, both both committees, the, the county and the city, are going to need, under my assumption, a, a blessing from their respective councils to 
to move forward with this um, recommendation. So what you have to, refer to me is potentially a joint city county meeting where we would produce a final vote. Um, and I'm really appreciative of this meeting because it gives us a good heads up um, prior to the community meetings, but then knowing that that's the event eventual role. And Carly, did you wanna to speak to that? No, Karen, and you are both uh, right. I, we envisioned having just like a final sign off so UDOT knows that there's support from both councils that we've done public engagement, right? And that was sort of lost the last time. So I, I would prefer for that process to happen where there's a joint meeting, we all talk about it and kind of send it off to UDOT. It's a great yeah. Well, I'm excited for that meeting because you have all worked really hard and you're all pretty amazing representatives of the city, whether you're biking or driving or pedestrians through downtown or business owners or shoppers. I mean, I really feel confident that what you bring back to us is gonna be well thought out and with a lot of ears open to the community. Yeah, Ronnie, I don't think it's going to be a problem if you don't mind my saying, because you already got three city council members on the committee. So uh, I think it'll be a consensus thing, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Thank you. Okay, so um, we are at 102 and um, I, I did um, in conversations um, in setting this meeting say that we were going to hold to an hour meeting. Um, but I want to give space for any final thoughts, um, comments, questions, feelings that anybody um, has on the council. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Karen first, then Mike, then Ronnie. So just to, to get back to, you know, complete streets ideas and I mean, because they are very inter intertied. So I'm hoping that we create policy um, and that we, we, we make an approach to achieve what it is that we are trying to achieve and then, and then reach those goals. And so um, I don't know, like I'm asking you, like how, how do we go ahead and, and try to implement this, these changes regardless? Do you think that if we had a complete streets po policy in place that it would lessen the urge or like it feels like there's this tension where um you as committee members are trying to like um uh push having more amenities as part of the parking plan do you feel like that policy would help with that goal absolutely okay I, I, that's just me but i would have mike and kaylin answer that as well well, I, to I totally hear that, but I just, for what it's worth, say that policy or not, that's the right way to go with this dispersed parking. And I will help advocate um, with UDOT for having the complete streets approach to this. And I will sit on, you know, on the side of whoever is talking to UDOT um, to um, uh, illustrate that we had design in the parking structure. Um, there were lights budgeted in the parking structure that were not considered um, aesthetics. And I don't think it is out of scope at all for safety and the fact that the, it costs less than the parking structure. It's not out of scope at all to add these. And when I look at the intersection like 100 East, 100, uh, or sorry, 100 East Center Street, um, and I think every time I'm a pedestrian or riding my bicycle, man, I wish there were bulbs at, bulb outs because I feel like I got an inch in so that I can see and safely cross. Like that should definitely be part of, if we're putting more cars on the street for parking, that should be part of the plan. And I'm willing to advocate for that for sure. And if we want trees and we have to put them in planters, above ground planters, let's do it. And let's re remember too that you know, bicyclists are going to park their bikes somewhere and we can create space for that too. And um, also I emailed council and said, Rocky Mountain Power is open for blue sky projects where they do solar. So maybe we can incorporate some solar. Um, maybe that's a little out of scope here, but um, it's good to throw it all on the table. And, um, and Chuck, I'm just really grateful that 
you know, you did the base work, but that you're hearing from the committee and the council that um, including these design elements and that we're going to advocate for these design elements is, um, you know, hopefully how we're going to move forward with the with the on street parking. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised by any of the comments I heard today. We were focused on trying to maximize the number of parking spaces because that was what we were tasked to do. And the cost estimate I have, by the way, doesn't have any of the 6% uh, included except as a plug number. So I, I don't think that UDOT would, whatever the number of lights is, I don't think they would balk at paying for lights. I think it's just the vegetation, to be honest with you. But yeah, I took notes. I think we're coming up with a really good plan. Um, okay, so uh, we've got the, oh, Mike, were you gonna speak? Sorry. Yeah, Chuck, just three little bugs in your ear. Uh, thanks so much for all your work, particularly the last week or two. Uh, I would put in a pitch for uh, ditching the bollards where you can for safety reasons. I, I really like the freedom of being able to have long vehicles pull all the way through if they need to. And I can't tell you how many times I've backed up and hit things. And if there's nothing there to hit, I'm, I'm happy about that. But, um, and I'm a, putting a plug for landscaping. I hear what you're talking about, about trees and snow plows and so on. We don't have snow a lot. So if um, uh, landscaping is a big thing, that, uh, particularly when you're talking about a net loss of trees and the way it's designed right now. So if you can uh, put in planters or somehow mitigate that, that would be great. And the stamped concrete, I'm not quite sure why you're, you're after it. It's, uh, uh, um, to me, it sounds like an expense that may not be necessary. And you know, if, if I'm wrong about that, tell me that's fine. But anyway, that's my pitch. I'm done. Thank you. Um, real quick, when it snows, we have very low visitation. That is the beauty of... Um, winter time in Moab for what it's worth. Ronnie, you were gonna say something too. Oh, uh, um, just to let Karen and Mike and Kayla know, um, just, let, just let me and I'm presuming Tawny know like how we can support what you guys are working on. And um, I was gonna ask if Chuck and Kaylin could just send the rest of us um, your slides from today um, uh, and that'll be helpful. Thank you. Okay, now any last final, final comments or thoughts? Karen, did, did okay, Karen? Very last, very last, you're talking about snow episodes. So yes, you, you hit it spot on. When it snows, we don't have the people here. The, the, the typical rule is to try to clear the roadways. Having that median to actually, you know, move snow into the median is, is not the worst case scenario, so. In that. fact, it could be part of our plan for snow. I know that um, it's complicated about, you know, snow removal on our, on our main street. So, um, but that is a conversation for another day. Um, thank you all for coming together for this special meeting. It was so informative and really, um, I am just um, really encouraged and excited to see these plans and see this project moving forward. So thanks to staff and to the committee for your work in um, what was a pretty tricky pivot. So thank you so much. Thanks for everybody meeting today. And we will end this meeting here with a, um, a motion to adjourn. I so move. Thank you, Mike. Second. Second. Thank you, Kaylin. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Lisa, Emily. Thanks.